So many of the, the people out there that want to know everything about the good jump. Well, let's give us the insight when the group started, where the young brothers come from and everything. Okay, uh, we started back in Berry Farms back in 1980 it was. Mm -hmm. It's been 13 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved along throughout the years. And I've taken over as manager myself since uh, 1988. Mm -hmm. So although the group has been in existence for 13 years, I've been managing for a little over five years now. Okay, okay. And Mo, and one of the first singles when the guys first recorded was what was the one of the first singles the guys recorded? Well, the recorded? first thing we recorded was actually the word, but Sardines ended up being the most popular song from that single. That was on the B side or the flip okay. side okay. of the word. Okay. So we say now that Sardines was our first record. Okay, and uh, you know, far was that record put out independently or oh, have no. a major record? We, we were dealing with a major record label. Oh, yeah, uh, big time. Yeah, 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 yes, Lord. Big time. Yes, Lord. Okay. Okay. We were dealing with uh, CBS slash Def Jam Records go, uh, out of New York, okay. uh, worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was a great little relationship initially when we started out with Def Jam. Okay. And you know, most people don't know Def Jam responsible for Run DMC. Oh, most definitely. Um, LL Cool J. Oh, okay. The Beastie Boys. Okay. Slayer, which is and a heavy metal group. And then we did Def Comedy Jam. It's hot up. Yeah, Def Jam. Oh, so y'all was among the heavyweights. We were up in there. We was up okay. in there. Okay. We were up in there. Okay. And, you know, as far as the sales of the single, did it do good? The single so well. Okay. So very well. Uh, we think we may have been shortchanged a little oh, bit. Y'all <laughs> hey, you know something too, Mo. You know, um, there was rumors too about the sardine. Salt and Pepper got their first hit off of that. You know, when people was putting the sinking the records in under that. Right. Is that true? CJ. Well, see, that's why I say I think we were shortchanged a little bit because even though we got paid for our record sales, mm -hmm. we heard our tracks on a lot of records being oh. sold around the country. But yet we never saw revenue coming in. Oh, okay. And we addressed it to the company. Mm -hmm. We addressed the company about that issue. And they said that they never sold our tracks and we just let it go. We didn't pursue it legally or anything like that. Oh, okay. But we kind of think that we may have been shortchanged, but all is fair in love and war. Well, that's good. That's good. That's <laughs> we good. moved on. That's good. That's good. Hey, um, but Mo, I know it's a challenge. And, you know, a challenge just managing young guys such as Junk Guy, or is there a challenge? Most definitely there is a they challenge. They try to see it head we don't get head we got a piece of hey, that hey, for you, baby. Hey, I think you know, man. I think, you know, it is a big challenge managing young guys. Um, I'm young myself, um, but sometimes I have to step out of the role mm -hmm. of being like one of their peers mm -hmm. and step in the role of being their manager mm -hmm. because um, I'm a little more advanced in terms of my thinking, and mm -hmm. I have to be a little more advanced in order to be steadfast in being the manager. So sometimes I have to be their buddy, but then I have right. to step outside of that, be stern and be firm mm -hmm. with them. And they're not always happy with all the decisions that I make mm -hmm. at that moment. Right. But I think that overall, in the end, they're happy. That's good. Because um, a lot of good has come out of my decisions, mm -hmm. and I consult them most often right. when I do things. Right. So I don't just make a, a decision on my own and just run with it. Mm -hmm. I, I always take it to the guys, talk to them, say, hey, this is what's in front of us. Here are our options. Mm -hmm. What do you all think? Give me some feedback, and I'll give you, I'll elaborate on your feedback. Right. Tell you what's the positive and negative of each one of the things that you want to do. Oh, okay. And okay. that's how we pursue uh, uh, managing the group. Oh, that's good. Hey, Mo, you know, as far as your expertise, I know you're a graduate of Howard University. That's correct. Yes, most and, um, you know, Mo, you, you, you go for it. You bad. Uh, okay. And, you know, and most groups that um, they have managers, you know, really don't have experience in managing a group, but I must congratulate mm -hmm. you on doing Thank a well job with Junkyard. Man, the D.C. cab and the tougher than level. You know, you guys' track record is just, man, I thought I had a good track record. Which, yeah, I was just on the chilling circuit. Tell us some good things about the, you know, how did the tougher than level, you know, movie part with y'all participate in that? How did that come about? Um, well, when we had signed with uh, CBS Def Jam, um, quite naturally, they were, they were, well, Rush Productions was managing um, Run DMC. And Rush is a diversified company, even 
it was diversified back in the day when we signed with them. It was mm -hmm. even more diversified now that they had the comedy jam and everything. But they were into uh, producing movies, managing groups, as well as having a record company. Mm -hmm. And because we were on the record label, mm -hmm. and they were starting to get into the movie industry, mm -hmm. they said, well, hey, let's give one of our groups a little part in the movie. Oh, okay. And so they gave us a small part in the movie, and believe it or not, a lot of notoriety came out of that little part. Right, yeah. As well as DC Cab. Right, okay. You know, as well as DC Cab. Now, Mo, one thing I liked about the DC Cab was that um, Junkyard was noted for having the bucket drums, the buckets, and you know, that's how it all originated, right? Yeah. So let's go back. Okay. I know let's we didn't back. move to the future. <laughs> let's go back there to the bucket, to the, to the good bucket drumming days, okay. and, and that what made Junkyard so unique. Is that true? That's very true. That's what made us unique. Um, when we started out on the bucket and we were playing in the streets of D.C., folks used to come out in droves to see us play on street corners mm -hmm. in D.C., C.J. They mm -hmm. would come out in droves, and we played in the downtown area, which was heavily populated by the tourists at nighttime. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we became just like the Washington Monument mm -hmm. is a tourist attraction. Right. Junkyard became <laughs> a tourist attraction. And I tell you no lie, there are people who came to town and they actually said, "Well, I have a friend that told me about you all," and I said, well, "When I go to D.C." I'm going to look for this band, and mm -hmm. they would find us on the street corners playing. I'm talking about people from Connecticut, Florida, mm -hmm. Idaho. People right. came to D.C. and looked for us, and they looked for the monument. Right. They found us on that street corner. <laughs> you heard it first. They found us on that street corner. <laughs> or those buckets. You know, and, Mo, and matter of fact, that tradition still um, exists here. Most definitely. You know, in Washington, D.C., Molly had the pleasure of working with some bucket drummers down at the Barnes of Whoop Trap. Okay. And, you know, all of them always said that the idea, the concept came from the good junk. Okay. You know, I like that. I, I like that. I think we were the innovators in, quote unquote, junk band. Right. I think we were the innovators, the one who brought it to the worldwide attention that you can take mere scrap and be positive, mm -hmm. make something happen out of it. I think mm -hmm. we were the innovators in that. Right. Okay. And, um, Bo, now, what made y'all get away from the buckets? And the Safeway card. <laughs> this is when the guy just got older and he's wanting to get more into the real instrumentation of things. Okay. Or? As they got older, um, they wanted a fatter sound. They wanted a more diversified sound, a more real sound, mm -hmm. I say, too. Uh, they wanted a fatter sound, they wanted a more real sound. And I think it was actually Heavy One who told me, Heavy One <laughs> told me one day, mm -hmm. he said, I'm going to say it the way he told me. He said, man, I'm not to be 22 years old playing on no bucket. We got to get me some real drums. Right, right. <laughs> That's my okay, man, okay. DJ. <laughs> and so uh, I said, well, Willie, I, I understand what you're saying. Because at the time, he was 21 to post right, 22. Right, right. I understand what you're saying, Willie, and we're going to work on that. Okay. And the rest of the band put pressure on me. They said, man, we want a good tile player. We want this. We want, th we want some bigger keyboards. Mm -hmm. We had money. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So the summer of 1990, we went to the music store, we bought everything all at one time because we had the money. Right. We'd been making money. We bought it all. We came out with a new sound system at the same time. Mm -hmm. We came out with a new sound system and real instruments. Mm -hmm. Sound was fat. It mm -hmm. was large. Okay. Everybody loved it. Right. People coming to triples every week. <laughs> Good job. I love it. I love it. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. Be right back at you with Metro World All Go Go TV with the Good Job. Now let's take a look at Junkyard Band. We just love the fun fun yeah. We just love the journey We just love the till our turn Let us get on yeah. We just love the fun fun yeah. We just love the journey yeah. Oh, 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 oh,
It's got a quick sell no. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. Be right back. That's it. With Metro World All. Go, go TV with the good job. Manager of Junkyard Band. Right, hey, we back again for the 411. I'm gonna give it to you. We gonna kick things off with that rough it off. That's the hot joint, you know. And most, there's a dance craze to the rough it off, huh? Most definitely, there's a dance craze that goes with it. What can, the concept? How did rough it off come off? Well, uh, last summer. Everybody was running around the city talking about ruffling each other off, you know. I think, I, honestly, CJ, I think we're getting away from the guns. We're going back to fist fighting then. Okay, so okay. Everybody running around talking about ruffling each other off. 
the fella took the concept, ran with it, came up with a nice little song. Okay. And I, I'm on, we was talking, you know, that Heavy One's um, influence were, you know, was real great yeah, in that. Heavy thing. One had a great influence on the song Rougher One. And as a matter of fact, he actually recorded the song before, uh, the, we finished recording the week before he passed away. Okay, so okay. So the song that's being sold in the stores now, Heavy One was performing on that. The playing the drums on that one. Most definitely. Um, well, you know, this is a very sad subject for myself. Um, you know, Heavy One's death, did it... Did it, did it have any impact on the guy's life um, in the band and the fans? It had a definite impact upon the guys in the band because we looked at what happened and how it happened, even though he wasn't the intended target of what happened. We looked at what happened and how it happened mm -hmm. and said, well, we need to restructure the way we run around and have fun and, and mm -hmm. do our lives, okay. go about our lives every day. And as far as the fans, most definitely had an impact because at Heavy One's funeral, mm -hmm. Many people, when the pastor asked people to step forward and recommit themselves to another life, many people stepped forward. And I had seen some people who were at that funeral who redirected their lives and gone a different way. So maybe his death wasn't in vain. And hopefully he saved a few brothers and sisters. Beautiful. Hey, hey well, we'd like to thank you. And like always, you always welcome here. Metro thank World, all go, go, TV always to the bone, bone, bone. You know, I'm only going to give you the four one. I love it. I love it. You <laughs> heard that before. If you want to know about it, you got to hear from CJ, okay? Okay. Hey, well, give all the people something positive. I'm going I'm to end it out. Give all the uh, people something positive. Well, bro. everyone always says stay in school and, and, and learn what you can. But I want to say utilize what you learn in school and take it back to the street. Come on. I'd like to thank you for coming on through, like always. Wish you guys the best of luck. Right. Remember one thing, young people. The key to a successful life is education. Without it, you will be a loser. And check this out. D is for dangerous, R for wrong. U is for useless, G is for gone. S is for stupid as you can see. If you go-go, go drug free with Metro World, Icy Ice, all go-go TV. See you next week because you got the power. Peace.